Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. I am really excited to share some awesome and easy DIY projects to transform my entryway. So my entryway has just kind of been this piece of our home that's been in the works for the past couple of years. It's gone through quite a few, I guess, phases. I've just been playing around with it to try to figure out the best way to utilize the space. Um, I have two blank walls in, you guys will see shortly, and so it's just been really difficult for me to try to figure out how I want it to look, but also for it to be functional and not just look pretty. John and I have had this table since we lived in Michigan like four years ago, and it used to have two leaves on either side that would fold in on top of the top of the table, and then you could also open it up and make it wider. So I had it in the garage for quite a while after I took the leaves off and filled the little holes with wood filler, and it's just been sitting there collecting a bunch of random junk. Um, so I thought instead of going and buying a new table, I was gonna take this and see what I could do with it and see if I could make it like a little entryway console table. So my dad and I sanded the bejesus out of this thing. I was trying my best to get rid of all of the little grooves in here. It just wasn't quite the aesthetic I was going for. So we um, sanded it and sanded it and sanded it, uh, which you guys will see, I cut out a lot of this footage. Um, and I ended up transforming it completely and I'm very happy with it this cost like next to nothing all I did was buy some new legs off of Amazon so you guys will see that shortly but if you have an old piece of furniture in your house you'd be surprised what you can do with it after we finished rough sanding it and getting the original finish off of it and then also getting a lot of those kind of grooves and um, distressing out of it, I took really fine grit, I think 220 sandpaper and just really smoothed out the top, dusted it off and then used tack cloth to remove any residual dust um, from sanding it. I then went in with my favorite finishing wax and natural. This is just going to help seal and protect the wood and it looks beautiful. It does a great job of sealing it and protecting it, like I said, but without giving it a shine or like an artificial look, it just looks like a nice, beautiful, natural piece of wood in the house. For those of you who are subscribed and who have been following me for the past few years, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you guys. You make this job so much fun and just so rewarding. If you haven't subscribed yet, but you've been here and you like these types of videos, please hit that button right now before you leave. It doesn't cost you anything, but it helps my channel out so much. So this is what our entryway currently looks like. It's like super lackluster. It collects a bunch of junk and just really isn't very functional. It was just kind of a temporary thing. I was just trying some things out, but obviously it didn't work. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the bench. That was actually part of our old table that's in the basement. Clean off the radiant heaters, remove the mirror, and get to putting this thing together. If you're gonna be moving on solo Wait a second cause they're playing the best song I'll be there if you reach out to me I really tried to use items I already had in my home. Like I said, John and I have had this table for about four years and we've used it for a lot of different things and it's gone through a lot of changes as well. This mirror I've had for about a year now. I found it at Home Goods for I think maybe 40 bucks. It was a great deal. No, it wasn't 40. I think it was 70, but still, it was a great deal. It's a beautiful solid mirror and it's been sitting in my office on the floor. I knew eventually I would find a place for it. I just didn't want to pass it up. So it ended up working perfectly in this space. I just threw in some drywall anchors to make sure it was super secure because it is a heavy mirror. And all of the items I got to dress the table are from Walmart. I recently did an Instagram collab with them. So if you guys want to see, I do a lot of reels over on my Instagram as well. Make sure you're following me there. I actually did this whole entryway reveal over there before I did it here today.
Though I truly feel like I improved the look of this table like tremendously, it still didn't quite match the aesthetic of the home or at least the base, like the legs didn't. So all I did was go online and I found these beautiful solid iron hairpin legs and I got the size that I needed. They cost $39.99 for all four of them and they changed out the base of the table. It ended up being the perfect addition to our entryway. It was exactly what I was looking for without having to spend like two or three hundred dollars. If you guys have ever looked for like an entryway or console table online, they're not cheap. And maybe I'm just cheap, I don't know, but I knew that I could create something that I wanted for a fraction of the cost. So if you guys don't already have a table that you could kind of tear apart and sand and stain, you could easily go to Home Depot or Lowe's and cut a piece of wood to the size that you want, sand it and put a beautiful stain on it and buy some legs. You don't have to get hairpin legs. There are all kinds of legs online that you could purchase very inexpensively and you can create your own table for next to nothing. So just a little tip, um, you don't always have to buy something brand new. Put a little elbow grease into it and make it and be proud of it. I love the way this turned out. It's nice and airy. It doesn't look bulky in the space and it's got so much character to it and I'm proud of it. So that to me is just priceless. So I did have a little fail here. I decorated the table before I changed the legs out, before I was like, oh, I just really need to change those out. And then I forgot to film that part, but I'm not perfect. YouTube is not perfect. You guys will see it all put together after this. I'm thinking about him all the time. I'm thinking about him all the time, all the time. And so now, like I said, this is a total entryway revamp. I have two weird walls in my entryway. Most people have one, right? And it's like, okay, you put up a mirror, you put it in a console table, you whatever, it looks great. I have two walls. Like, what do you do with this? So I think I have finally figured it out. This has always been temporary. It's always been like, what do I even do with this? It used to have a bench there and it's where we would take our shoes off, but it just, I don't know, it didn't work out. So I brought this uh, dresser in from our uh, what used to be the breakfast room which is now the prep, prep kitchen and I just slid it in here just to get it out of the way and it's become a catch-all so what I finally decided to do with this space is create a DIY hall tree I want a place where my guests can come in and know okay this is where I can put my belongings I feel comfortable here like come on in welcome mi casa es su casa as it were and I finally decided to do it. So I'm doing a DIY hall tree, if that's what we can call it. It's not modular, it's mounted to the wall, but that's what it is. So I wanted to walk you guys through this in case you have an awkward wall in your house or you don't really have a place where your family or your guests can hang up their jackets and set their shoes or their backpack after school. This is a great option and it looks beautiful too and it was pretty inexpensive. So I'm gonna walk you through it. Today's video is gonna be a little bit more chat than usual typically I just play a bunch of music and let the video speak for itself but I really want to be able to help you guys if you need it So you guys, some of you might remember when we were redoing our living room, we did a DIY slat wall, which was pretty uh, labor intensive. We ended up kind of ripping down the boards ourselves to like one inch slats. So today I'm going to be doing a slat wall here for our hall tree, but I knew I wanted it to be much easier because I was doing this completely by myself and I was on kind of time constraints. So anyway, I took this the paint that I already had downstairs, I was painting the cabinets for our prep kitchen in the Benjamin Moore backwoods. So we have this color in our kitchen. It's then moving into our prep kitchen and I'm putting it on the backdrop of my slat wall here to just give it a more of a cohesive feel because the sight lines from all of those rooms, like they flow, you can see all of the spaces. So I really wanted it to feel cohesive. So this gave it a little bit more depth to and more visual interest and made it feel a bit warmer than just keeping the wall white like we did in our living room. So I, like I said, I already had this roller and this brush all wet with paint downstairs. So instead of getting a big old roller, I just worked my butt off with this one. It didn't really matter anyway. I'm covering the majority up with slats, but 
I love this color. You guys know I'm, I could paint my whole house this color, but we won't because I already put a lot of work into painting it white. Uh, but anyway, so you can either keep the wall whatever color you have, or you can give it a little bit of a punch by painting it black or giving maybe a bold color, um, like a pop of color. It doesn't matter. I just chose that because it made sense to me. I then went in with a piece of select pine. I believe this is six inches wide and it was eight feet long and then I cut it to size. This is just going to serve uh, as the board where I hang the hooks for our jackets. Um, we started by just using a brad nailer to secure it to the wall and eventually I do take two drywall screws and I put them through the studs. That way it can really hold quite a bit of weight. You can see that I'm already getting so excited with this space. I'm very proud of the fact that I did this almost completely by myself. But this is the part that I chose to do to make my life super easy. So all of the wood that we chose is select pine. It's a little bit more pricey, but it's you don't have to do much to finish it off. It's very beautiful and it just takes a tiny bit of sanding in some areas. So anyway, I found one and a half inch slats by, they're one and a half inches wide by eight feet tall, and then I cut them down to size. But the slats that we did in the living room, we ripped down ourselves to one inches and it was very time consuming. I wish I would have seen these, but it, such is life. But to make your life easier, if you wanna try your own slat wall, Home Depot, maybe even Lowe's, carries the Select Pine. It's one and a half inches wide by, they have six feet long, eight feet long, and maybe even a 12. I chose the eight feet because it made sense for my project. Um, but I didn't have to rip these down. They were already a beautiful width. And even though they're a half inch wider than the ones in my living room, when you stand back, you don't really notice it. It's not a big deal and it looks beautiful. So you guys could do this in an afternoon if you didn't have four kids running around. This took me almost an entire week, but I'm really proud of this project. Uh, so basically to create your slat wall, you you measure out the wall and you kind of calculate how many slats you're going to need based off of the distance that you want in between each slat. The easiest way to do this is to just turn a slat on its side and use like the depth of it, which I believe was three quarters of an inch, but it works perfectly because you can just take your slat and turn it on its side and run it down and push it in between each one of your new slats. So you can obviously see what I'm doing explaining it doesn't, it's not my forte. But basically I took the slat and I turned it on its side to measure the depth and pressed it in between the old slat that I had already nailed down and the new slat that I was nailing. And you push it together super, super tight to ensure that they're perfectly straight and that's it, voila, you pull it out and you're good to go. We could get out of town See the beautiful world around Wanna see it now Pack our bags and get in that car Leave a little note and we'll drive real far Let's get out, we can leave this city Let's drive to the open air yeah, the countryside is so pretty With the wind blowing in your hair We can look back someday Baby, don't you understand That we only get one life I wanna make it count, honey Come on now and take my hand oh, Hey, darling I love it when it's me and you on the road with a couple of tunes in a carpet. And just as difficult as it was to find the proper console table for my entryway without spending an arm and a leg, the same goes for finding the right bench for my hall tree. Now, if you are super clever and you wanted to create your own like cubbies or little caddies that had like a built-in bench, then more power to you. I didn't really have that in me and I also didn't want my hall tree to be very bulky either. I wanted it to feel kind of airy. So I already had this bench. It's just a beautiful, beautiful live edge bench that I had in my office. I also found this piece at Home Goods, and I could not pass it up. It didn't really fit in my house very well, so I had it in my office and it was just wasted in there. But I measured it and I measured my entryway area and it literally fits absolutely perfectly like it was meant to be there. However, when I put it up against the wall as is, I really didn't like all of the different, like the different wood finishes. It just didn't look right. It didn't have enough 
like contrast um, or depth to it. And I knew I wanted a black bench. So some of you are gonna hate me, but that's okay. I'd rather use a piece that I had already and change it into something I needed rather than having it look beautiful but being wasted in a room. Uh, like my office and where nobody sees it. So basically what I did is I sanded it down. I did have to turn one of the hairpin legs because whoever manufactured this had one leg that was turned funny. It was backwards and it just wobbled a lot. So I sanded the original finish off of it and it's beautiful. It's a beautiful piece of acacia wood with a gorgeous live edge, but I'm gonna go ahead and stain it in this classic black. I knew I didn't wanna paint it. I thought that would totally ruin it and then it paint chips and it looks cheap. So. I went in with a black stain. This way I could still see um, a lot of like the natural wood grain and it would still have beautiful character to it, but it would have the look that I was going for for the entryway. I let this first coat of stain sit for about five minutes before wiping it off because I didn't want it to be completely black and I still wanted to see the wood grain. After doing so, it gave it more of like an espresso look, which wasn't quite what I was going for. So I added another coat, let it sit for another five minutes and really got more of what I was looking for. Now I do know that most of you aren't going to have a bench like this just lying around in your homes. And because I do want this to feel more of like a, a DIY project that you could do yourself, this is another project like the console table where you could go to your local, you know, the lumber store or whatever and find a piece of wood. You could do the select pine. You could even do like cheap MDF and paint it cut it down to size, paint it, seal it, and add legs to it, and it would be very inexpensive and would still give you a gorgeous, custom, inexpensive piece of furniture. You're gonna be sitting on this, you toss a few toss pillows on it, or a little blanket, or a little like basket with a plant on it, or whatever, and it's going to look great. You just have to put a little bit of creativity into it and a little bit of elbow grease. I found these hooks on Amazon. They came in packs of two and I ordered, I thought I ordered six, but apparently I ordered 12 and I believe I used seven. They were $29.95 for each two pack, which I thought was a little pricey because you can find really, really cheap hooks, but the quality of these hooks are really, really nice. They look great. You can't see any of the screws. It has like a little mount. Then you slide the hook on and then you secure it with like a little um, Allen wrench at the bottom. So they look seamless and they're very heavy duty. I'm glad I spent a little bit more money on the hooks because they are going to last. Um, but if you wanted to do this on like a major budget, Amazon has tons of options that are really inexpensive, but also super cute. And then your local hardware store will have a lot of options as well. All right, we're gonna have a little chit chat here. Uh, like I said, I did end up securing this main board with a couple of drywall screws and I screwed them right into the studs. That way it would hold um, as much weight as we wanted to put on here and not have to worry about it popping off. So I ended up going the extra mile on this project and I got some wood filler and I filled in 
where I put the screws and then also every single tiny little nail hole um, except at the very 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 bottom of by the baseboard um, I filled all of the holes because I didn't want to see them I'm also creating an Instagram reel that's why you see my phone I wanted to fill the holes because this is something that you see when you walk right into the house and though those little teeny tiny holes don't bother me we did not fill them in the living room and you I don't notice them if I'm being fully honest you don't have to do this step I actually created way more work for myself in doing this um, it didn't sand down as easily as I thought it would and maybe it's the wood filler that I chose it was very heavy duty so once I started this project you guys will see my face I was actually pretty upset because I had to sand down this piece of wood that I loved I loved the natural look of it it was beautiful but because now I have all these sand marks, I had to go through and basically refinish this entire project when I was basically done with it. Uh, I will say now that I finished it, I'm glad I did, but it's not necessary to do this. So I basically ended up filling all of them and then I took an 80 grit sandpaper to really get all of that wood filler off because like I said, it's very heavy duty and required like two days of sanding all of it off to where you didn't see all of the excess wood filler. Obviously, I know I could have used like a hand sander, but I really didn't want to bring a hand sander in my house. It's just, it leaves so much debris everywhere and would be really unhealthy for the kids. So I used my hand after they went to bed. Once I got them all sanded down, which to you looks like five, I don't know, 50 seconds. To me, it was two days. Um, I dusted all of it away and then I went in again with my natural finishing wax and sealed everything. And it looks fantastic. Nobody's going to know how much energy I put into this, but my wrist does and <laughs> it, it hurt a lot. Uh, but I'm glad I did it because now it looks like it was done right and it was done professionally rather than just kind of unfinished. your favorite music on all the way baritone shut the lights go in front I ended up polishing off this space with a few throw pillows I found from Target. This one is so soft, I couldn't stop touching that big one. Um, we'll see how long it stays cream. But anyway, uh, and then putting up all of their jackets just like totally melted my heart. You guys, they're so tiny and so cute. Everybody's got two hooks, one for a jacket and one for a backpack. Even Birdie has a hook for her leashes. But obviously, it will be very easy for us to put our jackets in the closet when we're having company over. I found this little mud tray at uh, Target. I could probably use a bigger one, but either way, it keeps the floor clean. Jeez. Do you like it, buddy? Do you like it? Yeah, I do. Yeah? Hold on. Mama. Jeez. You're so cute. Super functional. Looks great. I'm considering hanging those prints that I had here above here, but they would pretty much touch the ceiling. So I'm really not sure yet, but I am happy with the way it looks. I think it's great keeping it simple. Um, I'm sure it's just another area that's going to collect a lot of stuff, but it is what it is. People live here, it's not a show home, and here we are. Hi, you <laughs> balloon. And a peep. Did you go to Home Depot? No. We started.